This is MJ. I'm an author. I'm an artist. I'm an analyzer. You can find all my work at MJMunoz.com. Welcome to Swinging Through Comics, where I talk about comic books and manga and what they mean to me and uh, how good they are and other things. I think it's going to be a fun and wild ride. So why don't you join me as I'm swinging through comics? A thought just struck me. What is my relationship with comics? I love the medium, but I hate the media. That's That was the exact thought. I love the medium, I hate the media. What does that mean? Comics have the potential to be beautiful, to show dramatic, powerful, impactful, inspirational messages. And I love that about comics. I love reading comics that leave me feeling inspired, that leave me feeling satisfied with the story. Why do I hate the media then? Why do I hate comics? Even though I just said I love them? Because I love what they can be and what they have been and what they can be again. But the problem is that not everybody is interested in having comics be what they need to be. And I'm not going to get on... I'm not, uh, I'm not associated with any group. I'm just a guy who loves the medium of comic books and hates what comic books have become or what comic books have given me uh, as far as abusing or misusing the medium of comics. And uh, I think it's too bad. Um, I see a lot of kids today reading graphic novels. I've looked at some, especially coming to a certain wheelhouse or uh, whatever, a certain arena, and I've seen the, the graphic novels and the comics the kids are reading, and they're interesting. And I'm almost interested in, I, like, I would love to just make comics now. But I don't feel confident in myself. I don't have the artistic ability as of yet. And I don't really feel like it's something I can just jump into. I would love to be a mangaka. Like, just, I'd love to write and draw all my own comics, ink them, the whole thing, package them up, get them sold. But that's not where I am right now. Maybe one day. But what I do feel like I have the strength to do, what I feel like I'm stronger on, is actually writing prose. But I feel like I write pulpy prose, or that's that's what I'm drawn to. And I think pulpy prose is not too far removed from comics, especially if you look at the fact that The Shadow, uh, I can't remember the famous issue, but Bill Finger and, uh, and his <laughs> fellow, um, who now I feel really bad because Bill Finger is the, the guy who is, has less to praise about for the original Batman. Um, it just ripped off something from The Shadow. It adapted certain images that were in the pulp and it adapted the story into a comic book story. Anyway, I thought about looking it up. I'm not going to look it up. You can look it up who were the creators of Batman. Bill Finger didn't do as much as the other guy. And uh, the other guy was the the stronger partner overall. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Batman. Um, but, like, the pulp novel can be adapted into a comic book. And I'm thinking, what I should do is I should just write my own books. Why are you talking about this? I'll get to it. I should just write my own books. And then, if they're successful enough, I will pitch them. I will take money. I'll reinvest into the company. And I'll... Uh, the company, me. Um, <laughs> getting these things turned into amazing graphic novels because I have a cinematic mind. Like I love movies so much. I, uh, my enjoyment of comic books and manga, uh, has given me, I think a, uh, a well-cultivated, like, you know, movie director. I kind of, where I can think about writing a scene in such a way that it's going to be visually dynamic in another medium. But also I recognize that comic or novels need to be adapted into comics or rather you can't just take a novel and say it's a comic book now. And that's it. Uh, for example, I don't know why they did this, but they've done several, like dozens probably, of book, okay, maybe a dozen. They've been done about a dozen book adaptations of Star Wars books into Star Wars comics. Um, mostly Dark Horse, but uh, Marvel did like The Last Jedi, and I think they did uh, Force Awakens, um, and I think all the other six were covered with Dark Horse. And we're not talking about Rise of Skywalker, because why would you do that? Um, but anyway, like... <clears throat> Where I'm going with this is, like, I have a, like, kind of a big chip on my shoulder about the media of comic books, and, like, I want stuff to be, like, there's no reason it can't be family-friendly. Um, speaking of stuff not being family-friendly, I, I, I re-watched Star Wars last year, the six movies, and I was shocked by some of the stuff that Lucas included in there, um, you know, Slave Leia, you know, uh, Mid Midriff Padme, um, just, like, lots of little things in there that, like, don't really need to be there, and it doesn't need to be presented in that way, and... I don't know, because I haven't watched enough, like, Saturday serial pulp type thing, deals, um, like, you know, how the women were dressed there, but definitely a lot of, um, I haven't seen any shadow covers where there's, like, scantily clad women, but a lot of the old pulp novels, like, it's easy to, to sell sex. I mean, that's just, that's the truth. It's very easy to do that. 
And I don't want to do that because that goes against my moral code. And uh, it's not ethical. It's, you know, scammy, schemy um, and sleazy. And I don't like it. Um, and like, that's not the market I'm writing for. That's not the market I'm writing for. That's not the market I'm a part of. And um, other people can have that be what they want out of life. But uh, that's not what I want. And I want comics to be for all ages. I want them to be for all ages, but actually good. I want them to, to work. So um, I have on the thumbnail here and I have possibly behind me Star Wars Legacy, Amazing Fantasy, number, uh, just one of them randomly showing Kate Skywalker, um, uh, Amazing Fantasy number 15, um, Kamudo, which is a new manga by H Akira Himakawa, who's the mangaka. It's a team of women, two women uh, who did a bunch of Legend of Zelda manga. There's a 10 volume uh, manga set that they've done. And there's also the 11 volume Twilight Princess ad adaptation that they did. And the last thing I have there is what? Yu Yu Hakusho. So definitely I'm striving to write stuff that's going to be good for all ages. So what does that mean? That means there can't be certain things. There can't be a certain level of violence and there can't be a certain level of sexuality and modesty, that kind of thing. Um, and that's, that's what I am. That's, that's where I am. That's what I want. And, um, I would say Star Wars Legacy definitely crosses that line. It's more in the Lucas, uh, bent of things. Um, and that's another issue to set aside. Um, Amazing Fantasy or Spider-Man in general, there are definitely, uh, vixens or, uh, I don't know how else to call, uh, those types of women, but think of Black Cat, like there's women like that in the comics. Um, and they're happy about that. You know, the creators of the comics were happy about that. Um, there's uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, which definitely has Yusuke is a, a brash, rude character. I, there's a few character designs that are a little much, um, not for my taste. Uh, and then finally, there's Kamudo, which so far doesn't have anything inappropriate in it. Uh, it's a fantasy. It's kind of like if Dark Crystal were a manga and it was in its own fantasy world, that's like, I would just say Dark Crystal the manga is what I would just throw out you as a, a elevator pitch for what Kamudo is. But it's by these ladies who did the Zelda, and I don't think any of the Zelda had anything objectionable in it. So, uh, what am I saying? I'm saying I have very selective tastes, and my selective tastes inform what I'm going to read and what I'm going to enjoy. However, I'll caveat this with saying I want to read a bunch of comics and kind of be in that mindset of like taking them in, absorbing them, uh, learning from them what I can, you know, gleaning from them, and also just enjoying the good stories. Um, I have jokingly called, uh, Jesus of Nazareth is called the greatest story ever told, like on the posters and stuff like that. I have jokingly said to uh, my kids that Yu Yu Hakusho is the greatest story ever told. Why? Because the anime is one of the greatest stories ever told. It's, uh, I don't know, 100 episodes or 90 episodes or something like that, and it's fantastic. There's so much good in it, and I thought, you know what, I want to go back to the source. I want to see the manga. What is the manga actually like? There's inappropriate, some inappropriate, some objectionable things in there. Um, and I want to read the manga to see what it's really like and see how good the story is and see how deep that good story goes and just push aside the other stuff. Uh, will I reread Star Wars Legacy right now? No, but I read all of Star Wars Legacy, which was like 60 or 80 issues, I think. And it was fantastic. It's a great story. And I absolutely loved it. It ran for, I don't know, was it six years, seven years? I can't remember, but somewhere in between there. It's a great comic book series. There's stuff that, of course, I would object to and I wouldn't want, you know, my kids to read necessarily, um, or at least not at a young age, not a tender age. Um, but like, it's a really good comic. It was a really good story. It was really enjoyable. And I really enjoyed that. Um, Spider-Man has, you know, negative things in it, but Spider-Man is an amazing story about an amazing hero, a guy who goes from being just an ordinary, you know, put upon guy to being selfish and having that turn back on him and hurt him. And, like, the lessons and the moral ethos of, you know, great power, great responsibility, all that stuff, like, that comes from Spider-Man is so good and noble and heroic and inspirational, inspirational, despite, you know, the other stuff, the, the you know, just for fun, the cheesecake, basically. I'll just say cheesecake. Despite the cheesecake, that, um, it's, like, a great story. I want to read more classic Marvel comics. I want to read, I'm not going to reread Legacy. Um, I want to read Yu Hakusho, because it's a classic Japanese comic, I'll say, uh, it like that. And I want to read Kamudo, because it looks like it's going to be a beautiful comic. It looks like it's going to be classic fantasy. It looks like it's going to be high adventure, family friendly. And I'm really interested in exploring those comics as I go forward in life as an artist, as a storyteller, um, absorbing these stories and trying to learn from them and trying to talk about comics and, you know, why my taste is so selective, like why these things are good, uh, either in spite of the cheesecake or uh, because of the lack of cheesecake or, or, you know, it can be good with a lack of cheesecake. You don't need cheesecake for it to be good. Um, 
that's kind of what I want to talk about with Swinging Through Comics as I'm relaunching it and redoing it and restarting it. And maybe it'll start off as monthly. Maybe it'll be weekly. Who knows? you got to stick around and find out. Um, I hope you do. And I hope you enjoy this journey with me. Thank you so much for your time and attention. You can find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Everything I do is cataloged over there. I'm writing. I'm reading. I'm analyzing stuff. I'm talking about things beyond comic books and manga. I'm talking about tokusatsu. I'm talking about my own books. I'm talking about classic and modern uh, children's literature, middle grade novels. And I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff over there. You can go, basically, there's something new for you to check out every single day. And you can enjoy it. And you can also be subscribed there. Uh, and subscribe to me everywhere. Like my stuff, share my stuff, uh, tell others about it, help me grow, help me grow my channel, help me grow my platform out here in the world where I'm trying to talk about stories that I value and write stories that people will value as well.